Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Jake Makes. Today we are going to be building a PVC slingshot rifle that also shoots arrows. This was actually a build challenge. A guy contacted me and asked me to build a slingshot rifle out of PVC. And I took the challenge. It's even got a scope. So about two months ago, geez, two months. I should have gotten to this sooner. I really should have. And by the time I make the video and everything, it'll be Right, another two weeks, but about two months ago, a guy whose name completely escapes me. Was it Raymond? Ronnie, maybe? I don't know. He issued me a build challenge. He challenged me to build a slingshot rifle out of PVC. A really great idea. Really great build challenge, I love this. It's actually something I've kind of always wanted to do. We are kind of chatting back and forth through email, and I kind of asked him like, what sort of ammo options, right? And he had this great idea, like, what if it was a dual ammo thing where we could use both slingshot ammo and fire arrows? And that's, that's, that's really cool. So, basically the criteria for this build challenge is made I clarify it said mainly of PVC in case I feel like cheating, which I probably will. So, PVC construction, rubber power, it's a slingshot, right? Simple tools, rifle, sniper sort of thing. I want it to have some sort of sighting system, perhaps a scope, maybe, that would be really cool. And, uh, can't really remember the rest of it. And that's about all I can think of to say before starting this, so let's just get started. Here's what you're going to need to build this thing. Even though it's absolutely silly to give you a parts list right now when I'm about 93.6% positive that it's going to change by the time this is over. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely going to change. Positively, it's going to change. But I'll go ahead and tell you what I have right now that I'm going to be using, and then when I cheat and mess everything up, then I'll tell you what I use then, okay? Oh, and one more thing. Ricky said, if you do this, you know, you need to do it using really simple tools so that just about anyone can do it. That's like part of the challenge, you know? And like, Ronnie, that's, that's a great idea. So, I, I'm going to one-up that though, whatever your name is. I'm going to do it using only... Uh, I'm, I'm going to do it without using any power tools. I know I'm going to be eating those words by the time this is over. Like, I, I am certain of that. I am 99.6% certain of that. But I'm going to give it a good try anyway. So, Randy? Was it Randy? I don't know. It probably, probably doesn't even start with an R, does it? Here's what you're going to need, or here's what I'm going to use. What I think I'm going to use. Okay, so here's the stuff I got going here. First of all, most important thing, we have some TheraBand Silver Slingshot Rubber stuff. Of course, it's not really slingshot rubber, it's not designed, it's not made with that purpose in mind. This is a exercise resistance bands, you know. This is the silver, it is the super, it's the heaviest of this stuff you can get. I did not, I thought about using spear gun rubber. The problem is spear gun rubber doesn't snap fast enough for small ammo like rocks and pebbles. Although it does work better for arrows. However, as this is a dual thing, I would rather it work really well for slingshot ammo and not quite as well for arrows. We'll get onto more of that difficulty later. But for one, you're gonna need a bunch of this stuff. I have 25 stinking feet of it, so I can be, I, I can use this for all kinds of projects. Super excited about that. I've got some one and a half inch PVC pipe and some one inch PVC pipe. I also have a couple of one and a half inch end cap deals that slide inside 
the T coupling like that. I have a one and a half inch T coupler, just straight, you know. I got me a couple of pulleys. We gonna need that and I'll talk more about that in a minute. These are two and a half inch diameter clothesline pulleys. Those should work. I've got an assortment of bolts and some washers and uh, some longer ones and some shorter ones. We'll get into more detail on that later, but you're gonna need a bunch of bolts. And I have some wood because I told you I was going to cheat and I most certainly am. Sorry, I totally failed the challenge, but I don't care. It's gonna work better and it's gonna be easier to build than just using PVC, what do you know? And that's really what I felt the spirit of the challenge was, to make something easy to build. And, you know, I was doing it and thinking about it, and, uh, you know, PVC sounds really great in theory, but when I started thinking and drawing out tons of plans, I realized that, you know, when you're trying to think about how stuff's actually literally going to fit together and be able to be assembled in the real world rather than in the castles you've made in your head, uh, I realized that it's really not quite very simple at all and will probably require more tools to do it completely out of PVC. Using some wood, this is a uh, eight inch pine board. I recommend getting plywood because plywood is stronger and it would be nicer if it was stronger. I'm actually, but you know, I know a lot of you guys don't have a table saw or anything to rip plywood down with. So I got this board to show you that you can totally do it with a pine board. But like, if you have plywood, use plywood. And I think I'm gonna have to use some plywood anyway for the trigger because it needs to be stronger. However, uh, I think I might cheat and totally use plywood too, but you can use this, so. Uh, yeah, uh, you're probably gonna need some springs for the trigger, some paracord, but you know, everyone has that paracord, I mean, not springs, but, uh, and like, I'm sure some duct tape is going to find its way into this somewhere because I can't build anything without duct tape. Duct tape is the greatest invention of mankind, besides the Wendy's Frosty. But the vanilla Frosty, those chocolate ones taste like crud, but the vanilla one is the best. Okay, first thing we're going to do is glue up our PVC. Darn, I really don't want to glue this up. That, that that sounds so permanent. Like, what if I mess up? Then I'll have to... <sighs> First of all, we're, I am going to glue these two parts firmly on. You know, I actually might not need to. You know what? Ugh. I hate doing stuff that I haven't, like, thought through to make the video terrible. We're not going to need to glue these at all. Never mind everything I just said. Just stick them on there. Mm and turn them to where they look good. This piece, if you haven't guessed already, is going to go right here. This is going to be the front of the rifle gun deal. My pulleys are going to be attached. I'm gonna get rid of this other piece and this other piece. They're going to go right there, thereabouts. I'm sticking these pieces in there because it makes the PVC walls inside a lot thicker because the whole strength of this thing is going to be put on these two parts, which are going to be bolted. So this PVC is going to hold probably the, you know, around 50 pounds or so of draw weight. I don't know exactly how much this stuff is. I want the PVC to be thicker so it'll be stronger and less likely to break because that would really suck having this thing just blow up in your face. I guess I'll go ahead and uh, tear these pulleys apart real quick, show you how to do that with only hand tools because I'm so cool. Hope I don't have to return these. It'd be kind of hard to return them after I've destroyed them. Get the bank. Take a file. Ooh, that's a hand tool. That literally only took like 30 seconds. Like, that was really fast. Cool. Man, that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Hand tools rock. Literally, the bolt is like just this much too big, so, uh. uh ah. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. But uh, let me assure you, drills are not power tools. They don't take any power or electricity whatsoever. They're just completely, um, they're, they're not power tools at all. 
Ah. Finally. That took way too long. Okay, now these things are gonna go right about there and right about there. That's a predicament. Hehehehe. <sighs> <laughs> Like I did something right. I need to keep these things loose enough to spin, but without the bolt spinning like that. And when I tighten it, they get then to they then get too tight to really spin very fast. So I'm gonna use me some hot glue to connect these things a little bit loosely. That works excellently. We know. I'll cut those off later. Next, I'm going to take my non-power tool and drill another hole about right here. I'm gonna say seven or eight or nine inches from that. You'll see why in about eh, 30 seconds. I'm gonna glue this thing onto this thing first. Just, so hold on a minute. PVC cement and primer. Oh, that stuff smells nasty. I can feel it melting my brain. Alright, now I gotta wait for the primer to dry for about 10 minutes, which means it's time for a coffee break. Okay, we can now proceed with the cement. Oh, it's nasty. Good night. Now I'll drill that hole. The tape does two things. Number one, it covers up the threads. And number two, it keeps that bolt from sliding out. It's stuck there now. Okay, so here is my grand plan. The rubber gets looped over like that. Comes up here, as you suspected.
Cool. I'm gonna take and cut a little bit into the wall of this pipe to make a little bitty opening right here. That is for ammo storage, which both me and Rebecca, or whatever his name was, we both thought it'd be a cool idea to have some ammo storage in here somewhere, so I'm gonna do it in here. As you shall see in about, I don't know, however long it takes me to put a little hole in here. I hate non-power tools. Uh, like, you know those times where you wake up and realize in that moment how stupid you truly are? I mean, it, that's never happened to me, but you know. I put this bolt in the wrong spot. It needs to be farther up to get the correct draw length. So uh, let's go ahead and move that real quick. Go ahead and stick the rubber on there. Stretch it just the tiniest bit. And mark right about there. Alrighty, there we go. Okay, we're also going to need to tie a paracord loop around the thingy like this. I'll go ahead and tie one and then show you why. There we go. That right there is the loop, which our trigger hook, whenever I build that, will hook on to, like so. Okay, next step is to pull it back about to maximum draw length. Then we're gonna need to mark where our loop comes to on here, which will then tell us where we need to put the trigger, and then we can figure out where to cut the rest of the PVC off at, and build the stock and everything else around that. This will be interesting. at the J of JM Eagle. I'm gonna take about a half inch in front of that. That is where we're going to cut the PVC up to. Our wood is just under three quarter inches. We'll go ahead and mark. Okay, dokie, there we go. Got a nice, beautiful three quarter inch channel down the back of the thing. I went ahead and uh, cleaned it up with some files so it's looking pretty. And that is where we stop for part one. Because it's like 7.30 and I know that's really late but I haven't eaten dinner yet and I don't know if they even made dinner so I should probably go inside and I feel like this video is gonna be long enough by this point so this is the end of part one I'm gonna knock off and uh, go find something to eat and then go to bed thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already cuz you're not gonna wanna miss seeing part two and when I actually get around to testing this thing which I know it's gonna be great even though like if uh, I don't even know if it's gonna work yet, but if it works, which it will, because I make, I'll, I'll make it work. It'll be great. So, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Jake out.